Okay, the first thing you want to do is just make sure you have all the parts. There are two diodes, though you can do without those actually. Uh, there are four 100 ohm resistors, a bunch of jacks, what is it, eight jacks, TL072 op amp, a little holster for it. Three of these little knobby guys, make sure that they are the T18 with the uh, bumpy heads, because if you use those guys, the D, D styly on these, uh, the, the knob is going to point in the wrong direction. So, yeah, all right, let's get to it. So, I like to start with the lowest profile stuff, so like the diodes and resistors. So, I'm going to start with diodes. Now, you want to make sure on the board right here you see how there's a little black stripe there make sure that the white stripe on the diode is facing in the same direction because if it's not facing in the same direction it's not going to work right these are just um reverse polarity protection so uh these sort of protect against um if you do something dumb like putting on the power head wrong, putting it on backwards or plugging it in wrong, um, it'll protect the rest of the circuit from, you know, exploding. This bit up here looks different from the other resistors. Um, there isn't a silk screen outline right there, and I, uh, that's just a mistake. That's fine. This is 100R. That's where you put the resistor. Sort of bend the legs out a little bit. It'll hold those guys in place. You know, ready to solder. In case you are a beginner, what I'm doing is putting a little solder on the end of that bad boy. We call that tinning it. And that helps um, transmit the heat from the iron to the part. And now, it's important to note as well that you want to hit the part with the heat and then melt the solder onto the part, right? I'm not melting directly onto the iron. I'm heating the part from one side and hitting the hitting the part with the solder from the other so that the part is what is melting the actual solder. And if you do it that way, instead of just globbing solder on there, it will uh create some kind of chemical bond in there or something like that. It's better for conductance, you know? Clip all this crazy looking stuff. Be sure to keep track of where these go because um, if they fall down onto your rug, they're hard to see until they've embedded themselves into your foot which has definitely happened to me a few times. And uh, I really enjoyed the experience, you know? Um, the fear of getting tetanus, which I hear is a lot of fun, you know, tetanus. Um, just the, you know, sort of pain and confusion of the sudden onset of inexplicable pain. Um, you know, I mean, personally, I'm kind of into that, but, uh, you know, different strokes. The different folks. You want to check your guy for uh, bad solder joints, right? Cold solder joints. If the uh, solder looks like a little blob that hasn't really fully adhered to the pad or the part, just look out for that. Um, yeah, should look like little Hershey's Kisses. All right, so continuing with this sort of height theme here, I'm going to go with the IC connector thingy-majigger. So if you flip on the back of this thing, you'll see that there's an outline of it right there. And there's a little nubbin at the top. You see the nubbin? Now if you look at this thing, it's also got a little nubbin right there. And you want to make sure that you line up all the nubbins because, again, on this guy, there's a nubbin on the end. Be sure there's a dot over here. That's not what you want. You want the nubbin. There's the nubbin, nubbin. This program is brought to you by the American Nubbin Association. 
It paid me to say that. Looks all right. Looks pretty good. Could have put more solder on a couple of them. So. I'm gonna do just that. Not a big deal to uh, they call it reflowing. Not a big deal to reflow. A couple of these solder joints, if they look a little dodgy. Or if you want to put a little more solder on them. That's totally fine. Didn't do a great job the first time. Yeah, all right, there we go. That's on there. So yeah, next I'm gonna do the uh, switch gear here. I'm gonna wait on putting the uh, power header on because I didn't have a whole lot of room when designing this board. So you can see it kind of overlaps with where the uh, potentiometer is supposed to go right there. See those holes? So you gotta like put the pot in there and then trim the legs and then this thing will fit. And even then it's a little awkward. Um, but I like these shrouded headers because you're less likely to uh, plug it in backwards and again, explode. Here's the trick to these things. I moved this hole over here so I could fit more jacks on there. So you gotta kinda do this kind of funny twist maneuver to get them in there. You see how the, uh, the ground pin there is a little crooked. See that? It's designed that way. It's fine. So we're going to put all of them in here, including the pots. Um, and it's important that you put them all in before you solder so that you can sort of make sure that the parts fit through the panel, right? Because sometimes when you solder these before you fit them into the panel, there'll be one guy that's just sticking out crooked just a little bit and you won't be able to get the panel on and then you'll hate yourself so much. and. Years of therapy to get over that. All right. Yeah, oh man, these pots are so satisfying to pop in. I love these little guys. All right, so that's all the stuff that's gonna come through the panel. So now we just sort of bloop, like this. Just take one of these nuts and put it on there. One of them that's close to the middle so that it'll hold the panel in place as we solder these bad boys. Bad boy. Um, you know what I tend to do here? This is a good move. You just get the biggest knobs you can find. Hey-o. And then uh, put a couple of them on there so that the, so the guy will stay flat like that. Or, if you're not a cheapskate, you can have those, you know, you get those little helping hands, guys. Those are cool. I should buy one. Anyway, soldering iron's been sitting there for a minute, so I'm just going to put some blip on it, and then I'm going to take it off. And you're going to be like, why would you do that? And I'm going to be like, I don't know, I learned it from the internet, and it seems to work, so... Puffed wheat, shot from guns. All right, that looks pretty good, I think. There are little brown spots on this, you know, the white PCBs tend to get marked up from the heat, but that's totally normal. Don't worry if you got a little, some brown spots in there from the heat, that's, you know, you're doing good, that's fine. Last couple of things we're gonna do is uh, get this power header stuck in there and uh, get this little quad op amp going. 
power header is going to go right here. So I'm going to clip all these little leads from the pots, these two pots. Get them real close. Make sure I don't lose those little bits. Because again, it does stink to step on. Okay. Cool. Cool. How are we looking? All right. This is as good as we're going to get. Now, um, I'd like to do this kind of move just to be sure I'm getting it right. I take a little power cable and plug it into this guy because that can only go in one way, right? Because I got this little uh, nubbin right there. Um, and then on the board, you'll see it says right stripe, red stripe across the top there. You can't see it because it's, you know, obscured by those pads, but this line right here is the red stripe, not the part that says power. That's the positive end. The negative end is the red stripe down there. So just line that up with the red stripe on your uh, power cable. And that way you'll be sure that you're putting the power header in the right way around. And flip this sucker over. You wanna be sure to get good uh, good solder joints on this because the power is really important, obviously. Um, although it is redundant, you know, it's a row of uh, 10 pins and you really, you only need three of them to work. <laughs> you know, the middle six are all ground and then the, both of these are the negative and both of these are the positive. So if either one of those is connected, it, it should work, but still, you know, take care on that part. Last bit is to uh, put this guy in. So these things, their legs tend to be a little uh, wide. You know, you want them to go parallel, like straight down. So the trick to this is you can kind of grab them by the face and the ass and just roll it a little bit like that to bend all of the legs in the same amount. And you don't need to bend it very far, just a little bit on both sides. Just like that. And that should be a good angle. Sometimes it takes a couple of tries for this. Yeah, I need to just a little more. Doop. Okay. Plug it right into there. very satisfying to fit that guy in. There you go, you a little op amp sticking out of the back of it. Like a little soldier. All right. Boom. Let's put this stuff on. Uh, if you're feeling bold <laughs> and you don't mind risking your panel getting scratched, you just kind of. Of course, this will also damage the sides of the nuts. <laughs> so it depends on uh, how cool you are, whether or not you want to do this. You know, if you're not cool at all, you can do uh, you can play it safe. That's fine. A lot of my friends aren't cool, so. Looking at you, Blake. You're not cool. Love you, bud. Blake's my dungeon master. <laughs> All right. Only thing left to do here is put these little knobbies on. It's gonna look so good. So the trick to these guys is you wanna turn them all the way to the left. And then, uh, yeah, if you look at this bottom one, it's kind of got that little line going on it. You match the knob with that line, it should be just about perfect, I think. Ow! Ah, it's pointy in the back. <laughs> yeah, it looks about right. Not exactly, but close enough for me. 
Yeah, and then you can just line the other two up with that one. Again, it looks like that. Bloop. Oh, hello. That did not go as planned. Yeah. Okay, why won't you fit on there, buddy? You got a stubborn knob. I think it's the uh, pot. There we go. There it is. All right. Hey, that looks good. Look at how good that looks. Oh, yeah. Ooh. <laughs> so pretty. I like that. Uh, I like the way the text and stuff came out with the, uh, the chrome. My first draft of this had uh, silk screen on there, ink. Which was fine, it was cool, but uh, the shininess of this is very nice. So I forgot about something. Uh, I didn't put any um, decoupling caps on the power. So what you want to do is get yourself some uh, 0.1 microfarad uh, ceramic caps. They have the little 104 written on them. And uh, there, see that little orange guy right there? Right in there? It's kind of sticking up out of the PCB. Please ignore how giant these resistors are. This was a weird prototype when I didn't have the right part. Uh, but all you got to do to put these power filtering caps on there is attach them from the sort of middle pins on either side of the IC, right? So if, this is a 14 pin thing, so if you count one, two, three, four, that's one of them. And then on the other side, one, two, three, four, that's the other one. That's positive and negative voltages. And you just want to connect a capacitor from one of those to ground, and then to the other, from the other one also to ground. Um, and that just sort of um, cleans out any noise that might exist in your power. You probably won't notice a difference whether they're there or not, but you should do it because, you know, it'll be better. If only slightly. But it will be better. Um, yeah, so I, when I did this, I just used the ground on the, um, the potentiometers. They get the little legs. Uh, if you look at the holes that the potentiometers go into, there's a square one. Okay, the camera's not very high def, but this guy at the end is square, and that's ground. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I just kind of wrapped the pots around... I mean, wrap the caps. Oop, there they are. Kind of around the pot. From the middle leg of that, I see. Around the pot to ground. Which, it's hard to see. But I have faith in you. You'll figure it out. <laughs>